Welcome to another theory video. This is on Cape IT Unit 2. I hope you learned something. And thus, they had to go through the different storage devices. So, this is our one-stop shop for all the different storage devices and where we've gotten to so far, right? So, what happened is, we all started off with um, punch cards, right? Punch cards was a piece of paper and the piece of paper has holes in it. Every hole it represents a one or a zero because in computers the only way a computer will understand something is ones or zeros, right? So the hole will have ones or zeros and the whole the, the paper kinda run through this machine that will pick out all the holes inside of it. And the holes I see in there would be ones or zeros and then based on the ones or zeros it will be program code. So yes, people used to program in binary in like the seventeen hundreds, eighteen hundreds, them kind of thing. And then this piece of paper, they was like, nah boy, that, that paper too given too much problems because sometimes the paper would rip, sometimes the paper would get smudged, sometimes a hole would get too big and the computer carried it. So then they created punch cards. Now the cards now would be a little tougher, they would be a little harder. And the punch cards have the same holes, but they're just a little more um the sturdier, sturdier. And because they're sturdier, you could now take these punch cards and put them in stacks. And when you get these stacks of cards together, you could put them in a computer and they'll be read one after the other by a kind of scanner. And that's how you'll write a program back in the days. And then now they got punch tape now. So instead of making these, these cards that were big and had um, dots on them, they made it into a little tape and they made pinholes now because now they were able to read the pinholes. So once they had the punch tape now, they could take the tape and put it into a reader and it will read just like it's running through a stream of paper going through the machine, right? And then IBM created a punch machine that would be able to read the tape. So the tape used to look something like this here, this is this guy hand. It's like a um, literally a tape with holes on it. So it's kind of like that. Then they had the punch machine and then they decided, all right, using paper not really working out too well. So IBM created something called the magnetic tape drive. Magnetic, uh, magnetic tape drive. Now, instead of using punch holes, they use magnetic spots. So they magnetize certain parts of the tape, and wherever it's magnetized would be a zero, a one, and wherever it's not magnetized would be a zero, right? So the whole tape drive thing would work like this, and it would kind of just read in a circle going around, like this right here. It'll go in a circle, and the tape drive will just read from one side to the next side. Now, when we reach to here, we kind of reach a little junction because they had to figure out what was the best way to store information. But it started to get a little more expensive for... No, we needed these storage to get bigger. Um, but they, was, they still wanted to use tape because tape was cheap. So they started to use cassettes, like a cassette, which is like what people used to listen to music to back in the 80s and 90s. And then they uh, migrated to a floppy disk. And then it migrated from bigger floppies to smaller floppies to really small floppies. And then this is where they stopped using magnetic and started using optical. So optical now would start to use light instead of magnets because magnet, magnetic was working good for this here. But as things started to get better, they used it light. But there was also a branch now of people who, who, who took those magnets now and changed them from magnetic tape into magnetic discs which was the um, first one is the magnetic drum so they turned these actual magnetic hard drives into a big thing which was in like 1956 and then they got to the normal size hard drive that we have right now in the computer and then they stopped magnetic here and started to use flash flash now is just using the actual circuits alone Right? By flash using the electric circuit alone, we're now able to store things faster. So your actual phone right now doesn't have a physical hard drive that spins anymore. It actually has flash storage. Flash storage is only electrical components. Um, and we stop using optical. Well, we still use optical ever so often, but not as much. Um, flash storage is really where we store information now. And on servers and mainframes, that's where they store information. Alright, so these are just the explanation notes for it. 
punch cards. This will be like early method of data storage. Pum punch cards or paper cards containing several punch holes and they'll punch by hand to represent data, which will be ones and zeros. Um, so all you have to do is enter the card into the computer or a bunch of cards into the computer. Magnetic storage. Magnetic storage use magnetic patterns to represent the information, which is the same ones and zeros. Is either is magnetized or is not magnetized. Um, good examples of magnetic storage will be a floppy disk or a hard drive. Magnetic tape is a um, a coated piece of plastic that could store data. Of course, ones and zeros again, um, but it was less expensive, so that's why they used to use it a lot more. But it was very, it was much slower. That was the problem. Hard drive, they had platters, so instead of using tape, they had these big platters that were magnetized and they had a magnetic head and it used to spin. Um, they use now because of speed most of the times and they have direct access. Magnetic tape didn't have direct access, magnetic tape was sequential. Then they had optical media which will store media, blah blah, on a CD. Remember optical media is like a CD, the bottom of a CD really has bumps and when the laser shoots up and it hits a bump it will count as a one when it doesn't it will count as a zero and that's just kind of how optical works it's a laser based thing the smaller the laser the better so cds used to use a red laser dvds used to use a um, purple laser and blu-ray uses a blue laser the bigger the the bigger the laser the less bits that you could hold because the you wouldn't be able to hold as um you'll be able to differentiate between the ones and zeros. So this laser was big, so that means the bumps had to be big. But then for a DVD, the bumps had to be a lot smaller. And then for a Blu-ray, the bumps would be a lot smaller. So that means they could hold more ones and zeros per, um, per bump, well, per, per space. Then they went to solid state drives, which is what I was telling you about with um, uses electricity alone. Solid state drives or solid state disks, this is what we use right now. They have no moving parts. All they use is electricity. So they just use circuits. These circuits now make things a lot faster and that's what makes our computers move so much faster and our phones move faster and all that stuff right now. Um, all right, so the whole storage classification um, diagram is here. Um, I don't know, you should notice. If you don't, then you should. So you start off with secondary storage devices, you could have sequential, which will lead you to magnetic tape. Then you could have direct, direct could give you magnetic disks, or it could give you an optical disk, or it could give you a memory storage, which will be flash. And magnetic disk can be broken out to floppy disks and hard disks, and then you have different type of hard disks. Then you could have optical disks, which will be CD-ROM, CD-RW, um, and DVD and then memory well flash memory will be our flash drive or memory card so all of these are different ways of storing data but as time progressed we kind of moved from this side more to that side of storage thanks for watching the theory video if you learned something give it a like give it a share subscribe do whatever you have to do and if you want practical applications of the things feel free to check out any of my classes you can find them on my website at makeitsimplett.com. I have classes for all different subjects from CSEC IT, CAPE IT, CAPE Computer Science, and many different tutorial videos that you could find on this channel. So um, thank you very much and look out for the next video that is here or here because I have all the theory videos for all the subjects.